Eric Darling here, live and in person with Darling Data and, of course, Bats Maru, who is now my, just a permanent fixture in these videos. Uh, I hope that I don't get sued for uh, briefly having a candy dispenser with a licensed, copyrighted, trademark image on it, but I just feel like the, the resemblance is uncanny when you get down to it. So, anyway... Uh, I took a little break from recording because I had so much <laughs> built up and uh, when I came back to do this there were like 40 things wrong <laughs> with my computer including that uh, it couldn't see my microphone anymore so uh, it's a wonder that this is even happening for us today because um, it almost didn't. So we're going to talk about some new transformation rules. Um, I had a reason to use Azure SQL DB finally not allowed to say what it is, but uh, while I was using Azure SQL DB, I figured, what the hell, Eric, let's get curious a little. Let's, let's see if there's anything new and interesting and exciting uh, alive in Azure SQL DB because uh, oftentimes I do find it is the saddest place on earth. Um, I realize that it's also sort of a playground for Microsoft to test new things out. So, you know, um, uh, guinea pigs of the world, uh, I, guess, I guess we need them too. Anyway. Before we get into that, let's talk about you and I and our, our, our beautiful journey together. Uh, if, you, if you like the content that, that, that shows up on this channel, um, or even if you don't, I don't care, just leave me alone. Um, you, can, you can like, you can comment, you can subscribe. Uh, these are all fine things to do. If, if you feel that the content on here is of such value to you, such amazing, you know, mind-blowing value, that you want to support this channel, you can sign up for a membership uh, for as low as $4 a month. There's a little linky do in the, in the video description that will let you do that. Um, if this thing will move forward, yes, there we go. Uh, if you would like, oh wait, that's, that went one too far. Ha <laughs> ha, see, I haven't lost it all yet. Uh, if, if you need anything uh, consulting wise for SQL Server, that, that is my current profession, that is my title. Um, I guess, I guess I, you know, if I want to be really impressive, I could say I'm a founder, but then you, you get a bunch of founder mode jokes made about you. And I, I'm a, I'm a, I don't really need that in my life. I've got enough problems. So, you know, if you need any of this stuff, here I am, and uh, here you are, and here we are together with, with you paying me money to make your SQL Server faster. If you would like some high-quality, low-cost training, good for life, uh, you can go to the link up there, which is also qu quite coincidentally in the video description down below. And you can use this discount code to get 75% off, again, for life, SQL Server training. Uh, it, it brings it to about 150 US dollars. So uh, that's a pretty good deal, considering what other people charge you for far crappier training. Uh, if you would like uh, to see me live and in person, I only have one event coming up through the end of this year. Uh, November 4th and 5th, I will be at Past Data Summit with Kendra Little doing two miraculous, stupendous, fantastic days of SQL Server performance tuning, wizardry, witchcraft, um, probably no miming, which is good. Uh, if there's an event near you, and that event could maybe use someone like me as a pre-con speaker, let me know what that event is, because maybe I'll show up in pre-con there. Who knows? Just crazy things happen. Uh, with that all, all out of the way, let's look at SQL Server stuff. All right, cool. So we're going to come over here, and we're going to hope that Azure did not uh, have a weird connection thing, because sometimes if I leave this uh, out of the box for too long, uh, it, it takes a really long time to like reestablish the connection, and that gets really frustrating. And it looks like that's what's happening now. So if, if, if you ever, you know, are tempted to use Azure for something, I don't know what you might want to use Azure for. Um, it's not a fun place. Uh, if you ever walk away from your computer for a little bit and you come back and you just want to run a simple query, uh, sometimes it can take a really long time. And sometimes it'll take so long that the connection will actually time out. And sometimes it'll take so long that you'll actually have to go turn your <laughs> Azure SQL DB back on because it just it, 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 it goes away on its own sometimes. So we're at almost a minute just to run this thing. And uh, this is one reason why uh, working in the cloud is, is a true misery for a lot of people. 
but uh, wow, at one minute even, that finished. Okay, great. So I'm going to talk about a couple other things um, that, that uh, I don't know, myself and others have, have found poking around in Azure SQL DB. Uh, one of them is a, a new uh, use hint. So uh, Microsoft, uh, you know, those, those option, you know, max stop, option recompile, whatever. Apparently those hints just weren't enough. So Microsoft added these use hints. So option use hint something that, uh, you know, get, get uh, well, I mean, I guess they, they get used to replace a lot of trace flags. So I found uh, this one showed up, uh, abort query execution. Uh, apparently this one can be used to abort queries after a certain amount of time. I haven't quite gotten the syntax on that working yet, uh, nor do I plan to spend a lot of time on it because um, the, the, the other kind of funny thing about Azure SQL DB is that even though some of this stuff is there, it shows up, it doesn't mean it's actually implemented. So even if you got the syntax absolutely right, uh, SQL Server still might just <laughs> not <laughs> do anything with it. Um, it might just be a no-op. Uh, another kind of funny one uh, that showed up is uh, this one. This is a database scoped configuration setting uh, called Optimized SP Execute SQL. What this does, I don't know. Uh, I haven't been able to get it to do anything interesting yet, but that's there too. Um, what we're here to talk about though, are some of the new query transformation rules that, uh, that I found a little bit earlier today. Um, specifically these first two, because uh, the first two are the only interesting ones. Uh, the, well, then I'm, not, I'm actually, I'm lying. They're not the only two interesting ones. They're just the only ones that I can say anything about right now, because I haven't quite figured out what to do with the other two. Uh, logical to physical sort, I'm not really sure on that one yet. Uh, you know, there's this weird um, burning eternal hope uh, that someday Microsoft will fix batch mode sorts that, so that when they spill, they are, not, they are as efficient as row mode sorts. I don't think that's going to handle that. It's a little weird. Um, and then there's another one down there, redundant CSE spool. I'm, I'm guessing that that's a redundant common sub-expression spool but I, 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 don't, I don't quite know yet. But anyway, those first two caught my eye and were interesting because I can, I can, I can figure out a little bit what that means. Uh, you have LOJ and ROJ, and that's going to be left and right outer join, right? Two, left anti-semi-join, that is L-A-S-J. So that is actually a really cool thing because what that is is something that myself and others have been complaining about in SQL Server for a very long time. Now. If you've, but I don't know, I'm going to guess that the, this might not be the first video you've ever watched of mine. If it is, welcome, of course. Uh, but if not, you, you may have seen me complain in other videos and blog posts about um, when you do a left join. And so it's like a very common thing in databases. You need to find rows in one table that are not in another table. Probably the most common way that gets uh, described to do that uh, in various SQL tutorials is to do a left join from one table to another and then use the where clause to filter, to filter out where the primary key column and the table that you left join to is null. So, you only, so that by doing that, you can find rows that exist in the first table, the from table, that do not exist in the, the, sec, the join to table, the left join to table, because the primary key cannot be null when you actually have a join match, right? So good stuff there. Uh, and th that's what exactly what those rules do. So let's, now that we have reestablished a connection to Azure SQL DB, let's create a couple tables and put a little bit of data in them. This isn't a big performance thing. This is just to show you that the, this does exist and can happen, but you need a little bit, you need to put a little bit of grease on the ball. And by a little bit of grease on the ball, of course, I mean you need to uh, you need to force a higher compatibility level. Now, when I first started messing with this, like it, it wasn't happening naturally. Now, my database in Azure SQL DB is in compat level 160, which is the highest compat level that Microsoft like has. I don't know for a database level setting. I think I actually didn't try to change this one to 170. Maybe I should. But anyway, uh, the 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 that that use hint right there that you're looking at is the thing I was talking about. These use hints. Uh, so this is the syntax for those, uh, and with the, by doing this, I can force the query optimizer compatibility level to use 170. Now I tried some other stuff first. Uh, I tried the query optimizer hot fixes stuff. So that's um, well, that's that use hint or trace flag 4199, which is the equivalent there. That didn't get it to work, and then I was sort of like, well, 
you know, these, these things are new. Why not, why, not, why not see what Compat Level 170 does? Why not horse around with that, that little thing for a little bit? And uh, what we're going to do is just, uh, just run these queries real simple, real quick. We have query plans turned on. And we get zero rows back from both of these because, I mean, let's be honest, I put the same data in both tables. <laughs> Right? So there's not, um, like, there, we're, we're going to count, there's no rows that don't match between these two, right? It's just row numbers 1 through 16,000 something. But if we look at the query plans for these, uh, we'll see up here, this is the query plan pattern that I, uh, I see a lot when I'm working with clients that, of course, annoys the bejesus out of me. You have a full scan of one table, a full scan of another table. You have a right outer hash join, which, you know, the right outer part doesn't bother me so much. That's the optimizer's choice. It can reorder this stuff and do whatever it wants with it. Uh, and then we have this filter operator after that, right? And, of course, in this filter operator, this is where we are going to be looking for where this ID is null, right? That's exactly what our where clause prescribed in here. We are saying join I to O where on these two IDs where this ID is null, right? So that's exactly what I was talking about as far as the query pattern goes. But down here in Compat Level 170, SQL Server can take a different approach. Rather than use a right outer join and then later filter things out, what SQL Server can do now, or rather what SQL Server's optimizer can do now with these two glorious, beautiful new rules in them, uh, is it can convert that query to a left anti semi If anyone from the SSMS team is out there, please just put the full names of things in the query plan. It's okay. It's okay if you do it. You can show us the whole thing. We don't need to guess. We don't, we don't need to tool tips for everything. Just, just show us the full name for things. Please, I'm begging you. I'm begging you. Why won't you give me this one thing? I'm not even asking for dark mode or debuggers like everyone who annoys you. Just, just show the full name of a query operator. It's, we don't need the suspense. We shouldn't need to hover over this to say, oh, yes, that is a left anti-semi-join. How nice. So anyway, uh, that's about it for this one. I would like to personally thank and give high marks and, uh, and, and just convey my, the, my personal esteem to whomever on the optimizer team, it could be multiple whomevers, it could be a plural whomever, I don't know what that is, uh, got these two query rules in there. Uh, I do hope that they'll be allowed outside of Compat Level 170. Otherwise, it'll be 15 years before anyone sees them. So, <laughs> that's fun. Uh, but yeah, um, good job, optimizer team. Bad job, SSMS team. The fish, the fish yearn for you. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna close this file out. You can, might see that I have uh, several other tabs open here and uh, you can, I, I do have some work to do in order to get all these recorded for you. Uh, and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on those. And, and that's all you need to know is that they'll be here soon. Anyway. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. And I hope that, uh, I don't know, I hope that life is just going grand for you. I really, really am excited for all the things you have to look forward to. So anyway, uh, that's about it for me here. Uh, time to go record some other stuff. Thank you. I love you. Good night.